This is M2 Max MacBook Pro. This is M2 Pro Mac Mini. They're both the maxed out versions of themselves. And today, without you know wasting time with unboxing beauty shots and stuff like that, let's just jump into performance and see how they perform, especially compared to my M1 Max MacBook Pro, which is still one of the best. I mean, it is the best laptop I have ever used. And also my Mac Studio M1 Ultra back there. Compared to N1 Max MacBook Pro, M2 Max MacBook Pro has 22 hour battery life instead of 21, Wi Fi 6E instead of Wi Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.3 instead of 5.0, HDMI that supports 8K 60Hz resolution, up to 12 core CPU instead of 10, 38 core GPU instead of 32, 96 gigabytes of RAM instead of 64. And apart from that, it comes with a different color cable and the rest is pretty much the same. Okay, this computer is up and running. I'm gonna wait a little bit for it to finish the iCloud drive synchronization and stuff like that. I put my settings in there, but this is a fresh install. I have my uh, numbers open where I have all of the test results over here where we're gonna look and compare. I set this to high power mode because I wanna see the best result we can get. I don't care about the fan noise right now. I care about the performance. Meanwhile, I unboxed my M2 Pro Mac Mini and set it up with the studio display. You'll be seeing the results I got with this machine, but keep it in mind that Mac Mini is not meant for heavyweight work. But you'll see that it did surprisingly well, especially with one test. Of course, we're gonna start with the Geekbench 5. Let's start with the CPU benchmark. All right, the results are in and it is pretty good. Let's go and put those in. It is 2060 to 15,250. So that is way better than M1 Max MacBook Pro. And it is really good single performance. It is, I think that's the best even compared to Mac Studio. So now let's go and do the compute test. All right, here we go. 84,545. That is definitely better than M1 Max Max Pro, but it is not better than, of course, the Mac Studio. All right, now we have Cinebench R23. Let's start doing that. Let's start with the multi-core. All right, this is 14,679. Once again, it is better than M1 Max Mac Pro but it is not as good as Mac Studio. And seven, actually, I wanna look at the temperature. The fans are not running at all. 96.8, 96.9, feels warm, not hot. And now let's switch to one of my favorites, Black Magic Disk Speed. All right, all right, all right, 6,900, 6,943.4 to 5575.1 now now the fun begins now i'm gonna do the export tests for this we're gonna go to our beloved compressor and we're going to export the same 85 gigabyte video file using different presets the first three are simple 4k h.264 video files however the last two are h.265 and i'd like you to pay attention to the fourth one as you can see, M2 Max MacBook Pro finished this task slower than M2 Pro Mac Mini. This is because tasks like these that takes a really long time to finish can take even longer on the laptops due to heat. However, if you can somehow take care of the heat, the laptop can perform as it should and finish the task a lot faster. Then I rendered my Mac Pro intro video in Final Cut Pro 10 and M2 Max MacBook Pro finished this task in just under two minutes and M2 Pro Mac Mini finished it in two minutes and nine seconds. Okay, we're doing really well. And next we're gonna export the iPhone 13 unboxing video, which is a video in 8K. By the way, let's look at this playback. 
So this is 8K footage. And it plays really smooth. This is not ProRes, by the way. There's no proxy, no nothing. It's it's just playing back really nicely. It's actually two 8K files on top of each other, and it's cut. As you can see, we're switching between cuts and stuff like that, and everything is working really well. One, two, three. M2 Max MacBook Pro finished this task in 6 minutes and 13 seconds. M2 Pro Mac Mini finished it in 10 minutes and 53 seconds. 2, 3. This is the empty part. The new one is on the right. I always place new computer on the right. They're both going really well so far. Like doing really good. I think, yeah, and when Max started to slow down a little bit, it's jumping a little bit, and then the other one's just going fine. This is incredible. So now I place this frame counter on this compound clip down here, and we're gonna count the frames. The beginning of this video, this part, is shot on the iPhone, so it's 4K, but then it switches to 8K, which was shot on Sony A1. It's not in ProRes or anything, so I'm guessing the frame counter may slow down after this. So let's see. <laughs> it didn't at all. By the way, as you can see, it's not rendered or anything, and we're just flying by this 8K footage that is actually two cameras and they both have lot applied and we're just and we're just flying through them so i guess this means i can start editing 8k videos because i usually save 8k videos for super special events because it's um it's really difficult to edit 8k video and post it online every part of it is a really big hassle from the memory cards from the storage to editing, to uploading, and then YouTube trying to process that 8K footage. And if something goes wrong on YouTube, and we change anything, it uh, turns to 4K. So if you like cut out a part on YouTube itself, it doesn't render it back in 8K. I hope they fix that really soon because it's a it's a really big issue. While I'm scrubbing, it is not super. Fluid. As you can see when I scrub 4K footage, it is much more fluid. This is a little choppy and that may that may be problematic, that may be tiring after a while, but it is still so much better than how it was before. By the way, we are playing back in better quality, <laughs> not even in better performance. So. Let's go full screen, let's see what happens. Just full screen like that. Well, thank you very much for watching this episode and I hope you enjoyed this quick performance test comparison video where we compared M2 Max MacBook Pro to M1 Max MacBook Pro and M1, M2 uh, Pro Mac Mini and M1 Ultra Mac Studio. The results are good and I think my favorite laptop of all time has just gotten a lot better. So I cannot wait to edit this video on this machine and start using this machine as well. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I will be making an in-depth review, of course. Uh, and. I will answer your questions either in the comment section below or in that video. But until that time, take really good care of yourselves and hoşçakalın.